Hey, it's the Automotive Reviews. Let's look at the 2021 Ford Bronco Owner's Menu, uh, downloadable PDF, sponsored by Bronco Nation. And this is a straight up awesome. Now the manual is live for the dealer technology right now. And it's gonna be housed for all to see on Ford.com. Let's take a look and check this out. This Bronco in the picture is just epic up front. It just looks nice. What a manual, folks. What a manual, what a pick, and just what a background scenery. I mean, just the mountains behind the Bronco. This is what it's all about, folks. Let's take a look at the downloadable uh, 2021 Ford Bronco owner's manual. Let's take a look as it's downloading right now. Here is the owner's menu. And if you look back, this is the table of contents. You got the uh, contacting, introduction, the symbol glossary, data privacy, visual search, child safety, seatbelts, personal safety systems, the earbags, 911 assist, key and remote system, my key, uh, door and locks, keyless entry, tailgate, security, steering wheel, wiper and washer, exterior lighting, interior lighting, windows, interior mirror, exterior mirrors, instrument cluster, and instrument cluster display. And it goes on, the remote start, climate control, interior air quality, for front seats, rear seats, rear occupant alert system, which we talked about earlier in the video, garage door opener, USB ports, uh, power outlet, uh, wireless accessory charger storage, starting and stopping the engine, starting gear, auto start stop, fuel and refueling, catalytic converter, manual transmission, automatic transmission, four wheel drive, electronic locking differential, brakes, Electric parking, uh, brake, hill assist, hill start assist, traction control, stability control, trail control, trail turn assist, stabilizer bar, hill descent control, steering and parking aids. 360 degree camera, and it goes on and on. There is a lot. We got a lot to cover in this video. We're going to go through everything real quick and nice and efficient as possible. Well, let's start off with the... Uh, Let's start off. This is just a warning. <laughs> Wash your hands after handling. Talking about the battery and what you got to do. But first, let's start off. Let's skip the, uh, let's skip all the way to the, uh, personal safety system. And two, let's also make this bigger. Now, what is personal safety system? How does the uh, safety system work? Frontal crash protection and that kind of thing. Personal safety system, driver and passenger dual stage airbags, driver's uh, seat position sensor, uh, passenger seat position sensor, front passenger assisting uh, system, airbag off, front crash severity sensor, the restraint control module with impact. This is the personal safety system. Airbags, how do the front airbags work? Of course, this is a frontal collision. This is the airbags activating. Uh, crash sensors and airbag indicators. You can actually see that there. We're just going to go through quick. Just a quick look at the. Uh, and again, the airbag also in the, is in the side. And it comes out for the uh, support in case you hit. In case you're hitting the side. This will work and prevent you to. Uh, prevent um, the side injury. It's definitely nice. An airbag is designed to inflate between the door panels and the occupant to further enhance the protection provided by the occupants in case of impact. Now the system has a label embossed on it, crash sensors and monitoring system with uh, readiness indicators. And as you see here, boom, the airbag that goes to work, lessening the severity of the collision. These are the airbags, and the airbags located also in the roof. I think I did a video on this too. Um, this is pretty cool because you'll need that, especially when you take off the doors and the windows. This is what goes in to protect you, and this is why a lot of people like the uh, Ford Bronco and safety systems that it has. The safety can canopy curtain airbags above the trim panels over the front and rear side window, identified by a label, the side rail trim, 
which opens above the side doors to allow curtain deployment. Check it out, folks. Wow. Properly adjusting the driver in the front passenger seats. That's very important. We're not going to go into too much. We're just going to peruse through this. Front passenger assisting system. What is the uh, front passenger assisting system all about? You can already guess what it is. It's just sensing your weight and everything else. And so the airbags can act accordingly. And we'll fly through here through the airbags, crash sensors, airbag indicators. And we are done with the airbag. Now we got 911 assist. The sync system feature that can call for help. This is definitely nice. Now when one of those sensors go off, that's when it um, activates. Connected Bluetooth enabled phone must have the ability to make and maintain outgoing calls at the time of an incident. So if you don't have a if you don't have a signal, it's not going to work. And it must have battery power. And be located in United States, Canada, on the territories in which nine one one is the emergency number. So you got to have your phone with you, and if you don't have your phone, it's not going to work. Which I find sort of odd, because I think in all the other cars that I've owned, even without the phone, it still worked. It had its own separate modem, and it was able to do that when you hit the button. And someone did, you know, even even when the phone is not working, but not in this one. It has to work with the phone. So all the phones operate differently with the Sync Nine One One Assist. So, so you and your cell phone cannot sustain damage, and if the battery has no power, you won't. You're not. You it won't work. The keys and remote control systems, unlock and locking the doors, remote start, uh, panic alarm, which everybody's aware of. And these are the key. You're moving the uh, key blade. This is how it's done. Very easy, very simple. And this is pretty cool. When your alarm doesn't, when you're, uh, for some reason your remote don't work, you can use this key to actually open the door. Using one clean top, three volt lithium batteries. That's what it's used. Now push the, uh, push the release button and pull the key blade. Keys and remote control. We're just going to skip right through this real fast so you guys can get an idea of the picture of what's going on with the keys and remote programming uh, backup location. See that right here. You got to place the first program remote in the backup slot inside the center console with your foot off the brake pedal. Press and release and push the ignition switch. Wait five seconds and remove the remote control. Within 10 seconds, place a second program remote control in the backup slot. Press and release the push button, the ignition switch. Wait five seconds and then press. And this is how you activate it. This is just the keys. We're just going to mine key. Uh, my key allows you to program keys with restricted driving modes to promote good driving habits. Definitely nice, something that you give you a teenager or someone, or even valet. And this is the speed reminder audio system volume limit. My key, we're just going to scroll right through this. Checking my key status using my key with the remote systems. And that's the my key. Pretty nice. Doors and unlock, as you see. Auto lock requirements. And these are the doors and the unlocks. Miss lock. Miss lock is a locking feature that warns you if your vehicle has not locked. And these are limitations. And that means that no, you know, if that's done, then it will not work if the hood is open or if the tailgate's left open. As you see, this manual is huge. You can go on and on and on. We're just going to peruse right through it continually. 
This is the tailgate, as you can see. Opening of the tailgate. Push the tailgate until it's fully closed. Locking. Again, emergency locking, the button right there. Emergency unlocking. Here you see it, they're removing that panel right there. Tailgate, security, passive anti-death system. How does the uh, passive anti-death system work? What is the passive anti-death system? It prevents anyone from opening it with the, with the uh, wrongly encoded key, with the incorrect encoded key. Take all remote controls to another rice dealer if there is any potential alarm problem with your vehicle. This is the steering wheel, of course you can see here. It's telescoping and it also tilts. And you also have a heated steering wheel, as you can see the icon. Switching it on and off. Press the button and you press the button again to turn it off too as well. This is the stock for the wipers, as you can see. Switching the rear window wiper on and off. As you can see, switching the windshield wiper is on and off. High speed intermittent wipe and off, as you can see. Reverse wipe settings, press settings, press vehicle setting, press wiper, switch rear wiper on, when in reverse, are on and off. That's nice. So you can see when you're bagging up. And again, this is basically the windshield wiper blades, basically the universal kind with that, they call the J clip, just clips in place and locks. And here it is, replacing the wiper blades. Very self explanatory. Right here, as you see, slide and oops, slide it right off. Using the windshield wipers, of course. Courtesy wipe on and off feature. Adding washer fluid, you can see that right here. Right on the side, looks like it's on the right side. The passenger side. Exterior lighting, of course. Auto lamps. Exterior lamps. Definitely nice. Daytime running lamps on and off vehicle with configurable daytime running lamps. Exterior lighting, of course. Spot lamp on and off. The spot lamp buttons are near the lighting controls. Press the button to switch on the left hand spot lamp. And press the button to switch on the right hand spot lamp. That's nice that so you can see. Like if you're going off roading at night and the dawn is coming. It's definitely nice to have. Front fog light, turn signal. Using the exterior zone lighting, as you can see. On and off the setting, exterior lamp indicator. Now, exterior zone lighting divides the exterior lighting into zones and allow you to switch them on and off to provide lighting around the perimeter of your vehicle. And that's definitely nice. And I'm thinking that the, the settings um, the setting to start it to uh, turn it on. I think what would be cool if you came up to the car and you get in the car in a parking lot and only a certain zone that you approach will light up. Automatic high beam as you can see. How does it work? And by the sensor detecting when the other person on coming um, automatic high beam controls turn on the high beam if it is dark enough and no other traffic is present if it detects an approaching vehicle headlamps or tail lamps or street lighting ahead the system turns the high beams off 
Now, that would be nice if it also worked with the light bar too, because I know a lot of people at, with trucks, they tend to keep it lit, you know, and they're city driving and no need for the, you know, the LED strip to be on and they have it on blinding people. It'd be cool if that worked with the system too, since everything is wired that it will automatically turn it off and then turn it back on. It'd be nice if it did. That's something to see. We'll be able to see that once we get these vehicles in our driveways and be able to learn about all the features and how it works. I'm going to find out how that worked, dude, and I'll talk about it in the video. Hopefully it does work all together. Automatic high, contro high beam control requirements. So it's got to be greater than 32 miles per hour in order for the high beam thing, automatic high beam to control to work. Exterior lighting, interior lighting, ambient lighting, adjusting ambient lighting. So it's nice to have ambient lighting. Windows, window bounce back. Bounce back, the window stops in reverse if it detects an obstruction. That's nice. Tailgate window, interior mirrors, auto dimming interior, auto dimming interior mirror limitations. And this again is adjusting the exterior mirrors right here. Left to right, folding, push the mirror toward the door window glass to make sure that you, and it does, this is not, they don't have electric folding mirrors. As you can see, you have to do it manually as indicated here, folding, push the mirror toward the door, which is fine. Again, there's an instrument cluster, very self-explanatory. Uh, compass, ambient lighting, this is all the different things. And C being a digital speedometer, as you see here. E being a compass and the ambient temperature. Tachometer and speedometer. Distance to empty. And uh, this is the instrument cluster, as you can see. I'm just going to peruse right through it. Remote start. And it's cool that they that it does it with the key. Now, a lot of cars don't have the remote start on the key. But a lot of American cars do, I believe. Where you can use the key, but a lot of times you use your um, app to turn on and off your car, and not the keys on the remote car on the um, luxury cars. They use the phone to do that. But American cars, that's good because sometimes you may not have access to your phone, and you're still able to start your car as long as you're on. Um, you have to be a certain perimeter in order for it to start. As you see here, these are the things that must not be functioning if you want it to work. You can't have an alarm on, the hood has to be closed, and the ignition has to be off. So it's a remote start. There's a climate control system, as you see here. It's very, very self-explanatory, which it should be. Make it easier, you know, max, max airflow. Everybody knows how that works. Max AC, switching air and condition on and off. Switching and recirculator on and off, as you can see the icons. Setting the temperature. If I see anything that looks weird, we'll stop and talk about it. But so far, I don't. Switching dual mode off. We all know what dual mode is for the passenger and the driver. Manual temperature control, defrost, switching maximum cooling on and off. And what we'll do, front seats, headrests, two still stems, sleeve lock, which is D right there, click. Front seat, the tilting, you have the tilting headrests. And 
and again you have the electric seats and everything else set up too same thing up and down so this part moves up and down and not this is also moves so you can move this up and down and slide it like that as you can see a lump adjusting the lumbar support system right here heated seats the back seats as well adjusting the head restraints rear seats unfolding the seats as you can see pulling that up and then this turning as you can see pull the strap garage door openers and everybody knows how that works sometimes you may have to go through it again and again in order to get it to work properly take a look programming the garage door opener to your um you have to go in here and get to hit that button and once you hit that button then of course certain things will go into place and you'll be able to see that it's working properly and usually it's an icon it's something that lights up to let you know that We'll keep scrolling because I don't want to be stuck on the garage door opener because there's so many pages. Well, this is A Automotive Reviews. Thanks for watching. This is the USB ports. Charging the device, which we all know how to do. This is the rear, the center uh, console. Power outlet indicators. And guys, this is basically the owner's menu. Storage. Glove box, you have the center console here, you have the locking console, you have the uh, a glove box. You have a key right here too, that's definitely nice. A luggage compartment under the floor storage. As you can see here, locating the mat pockets. On and off. Starting and stopping the engine. And this right here, starting and stopping the engine right here. Switching automatic engine, starting to stop off. So accessing the passive key back up so you can't permanently turn off the it only you know, the engine start stop but you can't permanently turn it off it just has it's something that you have to do every time you turn on the car I hate that feature I don't know a lot of people hate that start stop engine it's an annoyance Uh, manual transmissions. This goes on and on. Auto start stop. And if you guys have any particular questions about the manual, go ahead and leave it in the comments. And we will, of course, 87 octane. The correct fuel. And it even comes with a fuel funnel. which you have to fully insert. And again, this fueling system is nice because it it doesn't have a, it's like you just pop it in there. You don't have to turn anything to take it off, as you can see. Just like the Volvo system, it's definitely nice. You just plug it in there. It makes a big difference because, <laughs> you, you know, you get sick of taking off that uh, cap, but then you need this. Is is this is like built into this? But if for some reason you have to um, put gas in it yourself, you'll have to use this. They give you something else because you can't, you know, in order to pour the gas in. That's what that's what we saw here. This right here. Which 
triple shooting ten capacity. I just thought it was cool to go over that. Reverse. Uh, what is the crawler gear? Allows you to cruise at ultra low speeds with a clutch fully engaged when they're driving through obstacles and jagged terrain. And crawler gear. It's basically the press the clutch paddle to the floor and disengage clutch. Shift in the C by raising the collar as you see here. The gear shift knob, then moving the lever fully to the left, then the backwards. That's pretty cool. Sort of wanted to end this video, but the more I go through this and see cool things, I just want to keep going. Checking the manual transmission fluid level, which is something the service person to do, but this is showing you how to do it. You can't beat it. Right here. These are all the steps. See, a lot of people that own Broncos are do-it-yourselfers, basically. And this is just showing you how it's done. And it has the... You know, it has the instructions to show you. Manual transmission, of course. What about the icon. Automatic transmission. As you see on the bottom of the speedometer. Audible warnings, four wheel drive, limitations, and this is a gold mode, so as you know. And again, this is the uh, electronic uh, locking differential, if equipped. As you see here, A, the front locking differential, and B, the rear locking differential. Mitch Max tires. You don't really want that because that affects the performance. So you want to make sure all your tires are matching. Brake fluid. Reservoir. There's the brakes. Electric parking brake. Heel start assist. A heel start assist makes it easier for you to pull away when your vehicle is on a slope without using a parking brake. So you can imagine how that works. So if you're on a regatarian or rocks, you just let off the gas and boom, everything just stays right there. You don't have to worry about reaching over and pulling something up and then your car sliding off the rocks. That, your SUV is sliding off the rocks. And, and perhaps incurring damage. You don't want that. So you need to heal start assist. That's definitely nice. So it's got to be facing uphill or when your vehicle is in reverse and facing downhill. Traction control. Slippery loose surfaces. Stability control. Electronic stability control. Roll stability control. Prevent ro rollovers. And applying the brake. Curve control. Avoiding objects in the roadway, reducing engine power, and applying the brakes to one or more of the wheels individually. As you can see, as you can see the B when it's functioning and A when it's not functioning. You just lose it. Oh, it snaps. And here it just stays right on, right on, right on kilter. Torque vectoring and braking, traction control, all that working, just working beautifully. To keep you alive. ESC features. 
stability control indicator. You got trail control. Trail control lets you focus on steering during low speed. Um, off road use by controlling your vehicle acceleration and braking and maintaining the speed you, that you have set. Now it's normal for you to hear the anti lock braking system working. So. Setting that trail control speed. The speed you prefer, press the button. To set increase the speed, press and hold, adjust the speed in larger increments, as you can see. Decreasing the speed with minus, increasing with a plus. And again, trail control, as you can see here. Set plus and the minus. Yep, trail one paddle drive indicator, as you can look. Displays green instrument cluster. So boy, we got 209 pages we've done so far. You guys, they all motor reviews. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. Hey, you guys, they all motor reviews. Remember, like, share, subscribe. And thanks for coming to the channel. I appreciate you. Until then, we out.